Okay, so the Bird Box. Uh, everyone's talking about the Bird Box, like it's it's the biggest film on Netflix. Apparently, it, this is gonna kind of be like a um, like a tradition of uh, you know of kind of like Netflix because you might remember the year prior we had Bright come out on Christmas. You know the uh, the the urban fantasy with Will Smith and Joel Edgerton. Uh, and it and apparently was the most popular film on the service, which is kind of obvious when you think about it. You know, it's it's Christmas time, everyone's home, everyone's off of work, so naturally everyone can watch the film. And now we have Bird Box, which is kind of like a similar, uh, a similar type deal. You know, it came out on Christmas. You've got some big names behind it. It looks like a fairly big film, a fairly big genre genre film, kind of like you know like a, a like apocalyptic horror type genre. Uh, which is which is great to pursue. I mean, this year has been great for horror. It's had stuff like uh, you know, like Hereditary and and Mandy and Halloween and Suspiria. You've had great horror films this year, and Bird Box. Uh, <laughs> well, okay. Here's the thing. A lot of people will say that you know this is kind of like the like the poor man's uh, a, a quiet place. Which I think is unfair to, to say, because, you know, a lot of these films, uh, they, they go into production around, like, you know, different times. I think, I'm pretty sure Bird Box was in production well before A Quiet Place was. I'm pretty sure it was. Um, so I'm willing to distance it from that. I'm, I'm, so I'm not going to compare it to A Quiet Place, even though I know a lot of people look at the structure and see that it's, it's quite similar in how it assembles itself. So uh, the premise, if you haven't, if you haven't seen the premise of Bird Box, essentially, uh, you know, humanity has collapsed because of some unknown creature that apparently, or some unknown force that, when you look at it, um, it causes you to go suicidal or it taps into your desires, and apparently it recruits um, crazy people. Not quite sure the science behind it, and I'm not quite sure I want to know the science behind it, uh, but it recruits crazy people to basically bring more people into into the light, into the craziness, to like to, to look, look at the crazy light. Um, and so, and so Sandra Bullock is one of those characters who gets involved uh, with a group of survivors. You know, she watches her best friend perish um, when she looks at the light and starts committing suicide. So she she shacks up with these other survivors and they try to survive from there. Uh, standard post apocalyptic horror stuff. Um, where I think the film here's the one thing I, that I argue about the film that doesn't work. I really don't like the the non linear approach to it. Um, I, I know it does create a little bit of of, uh, of suspense in the film, but it also kind of pushes some of it, you know, because it, it creates suspense because you want to find out how they got to this point. But at the same time, because they keep cutting back to it, you kind of know who's not going to survive. Uh, like, And I think that takes the mystery out because, let's face it, these post-apocalyptic horror movies, whenever you have a group of characters, you know, you know, huddled together in like in one house or one location, you know they're going to get picked off. The thing is, like, the tension is that you don't know how or in what order. And I think it kind of removes it from that. So I, th that's that's my personal gripe about how the movie was assembled in that on that aspect. Um, and she shacks up with with a few interesting characters. Uh, you got you got uh, Travante Road. Um, you've got uh, B.D. Wong. You've got um, uh, John Malkovich. You've got you've got quite a, you've got quite an accomplished cast here. Um, and they do fairly well with like the characters they're given. Um, and I do kind of, uh, one thing I do say, think that I like the most about this film is the aloofness, um, of this, of this force that, that, you know, makes people kill themselves. I like how it's, it's always kept uncertain. I, you know, it's, it's kind of like, you know, when you keep a monster in the dark, you know, you, you keep them off to the side. You don't want to, you don't want to show too much to of the monster because then it looks goofy. And, uh... Although Annihilation, I gotta mention that. I'm glad that <laughs> that alert came up. Because Annihilation did a great job showcasing its monster. That's that's one of my favorite films of last year. <laughs> Thank you for that follow. So, um, and apparently there was a monster they had for Bird Box that they showed off and it didn't look that good. So, um, I, I'm, I'm willing to give them the benefit. I'm, I'm willing to, like, say, okay, you know, if they don't reveal too much about the monster, that's great. I don't need to know that much. You know, it's kind of like, you know, a few years back we had that Blair Witch remake. Uh, that did have a monster, but they didn't show off much of it because it, eh, it didn't look that impressive. So I'm, I'm cool with that. I like that premise. Um, the thing is, I, I feel like it kind of goes through some of the, the, the familiar motions a little too comfortably. Like, there's a scene where they get to a grocery store. So naturally, everyone starts partying in the grocery store. But then they find out someone's in there, 
and that they might kill them because they're, you know, in, 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 in the back there and someone's got to sacrifice and they got to go back to the house and they got to say, oh, where's such and such? And everyone's all quiet and they don't mention who was, who was killed and everything like that. We've, we've been here, been here before, done that before. Um, and, and there's a little bit of, uh, I, there's a little bit of like predictability almost within the plot. Like one character says like, we can't let in this guy cause he's crazy and he's going to kill us all. Um, and that kind of turns out to be true. So, <laughs> so I guess, I guess like, uh, the, the, the crazy character who was, who was saying like, you know, it, it's not safe. He was right. So I guess believe him then. Um, I, the atmosphere is not too bad. I, I like the fact that you know they, you know that that Sandra Bullock has to connect with these two kids and try to protect them in this world. The in this world that she's struggling to survive in, um, it kind of takes like a little bit of like a too easy route of how they survive this. Um, I, I I won't spoil it in case you haven't seen it yet, but I did I did feel it was kind of like a just kind of like kind of like a quick fix. It's like we we've kind of run out of tension here, so just quickly finish it up, you know. Um, but I, I do like some of the atmosphere. I, do, I love some of the kills here. I, I love some of the kills where people are like, they smash out of windows or they, they stab themselves in the neck repeatedly or they bang their head against glass. There's one really great kill that I love that they hold on where uh, this one woman just gets into a burning car just as it's about to explode. Um, so, I mean, technically, it, it's got some cool stuff in it. I like the way it's assembled. I love the concept. Um... But I feel like it gets a little bit too comfy with a lot of like the familiar apocalyptic tropes that it really doesn't evolve into anything more than just kind of like the the, the allure of the survival with a little bit of with a little bit of like the cliche dialogue. Like at one point, Sandra Bullock's character is looking after these kids with another character saying like, oh, man, we when we were kids, we used to go out and play and all that. And Bullock's like, dude, the world's ending. Kids are not going to get to do any of that shit. So just cut that out just just <laughs> remove that from their from their minds um and, and th there was there were very few moments that kind of really drew me in like that i did li like i said i like this film more technically than i like it from the story like i love the 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 idea of this force that's killing off humanity and these and the, these unseen creatures um i love kind of the the kind of loose mechanics of how you know when they're when they're trying to not look at the world but still navigate through it um with the, how they got to use like twine and stuff like that um, I don't think it's worthy of the, the dumb little bird box challenge, so don't do that, kids, if you have, because uh, that's very, very dangerous. But, uh, but yeah, I, I'm very mixed on the film. I like the premise. I like the technicalities of it. I just wish it had a few better characters and a much better story, especially for the, the talent you got assembled here. Um, you know, Sandra Bullock, I, I've never thought she's that great. Uh, of an actor, she she can usually do well in a, in a decent role. I think she's okay here. I think she's given just the right amount of character she needs. Um, but with like the other characters you hear, like like John Malkovich is playing, you know the the jerk he usually plays in most of most of his films. Um, that uh, that I I don't know. I, I kept getting frustrated with this film because I kept wanting it to break out to to do something more. Uh, not exactly to show more of the monster. I'm fine with that. The the premise is great, but. It, it really needs something to stand out, especially in a year when we've had some amazing horror films with, with really great concepts. So for Bird Box, two and a half out of five stars.